In today's video, we're doing a head-to-head -head comparison between the Magic Kingdom and Europa Park. Yep, it's all the juicy details in this video. Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. I'm Sarah. And I'm Kevin, how you doing? <laughs> he gets, we're the Mick Falls, a family of six crazy people with four kids. A cat and two hamsters. <laughs> and we moved from the USA to Germany in February of 2021. And we've been sharing all of our craziness on this channel since then. So we just recently went on a trip for our Erbstferien, which is fall break, basically. We went to Colmar, and only 45 minutes from Colmar is Europa Park. Yeah. And we had an amazing time, and if you didn't see our first video about Colmar, make sure to go back and watch that video. I'll have the link in the description below. So before we get any comments, we're gonna be speaking in English. So in English, you would say Europa Park, like Europe, Europa Park. If you're speaking in German, you say it, now I'm of course not gonna pronounce it perfectly because I'm not a German, a native Europa. German speaker part, but. Europa Park. Europa Park. Europa Park. Europa. <laughs> really, it's, you're supposed to say like Europa, but Europa. of course that sounds bad. Yeah, that, you, I think you're saying it well. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but I have no idea. When Germans say it, it comes out differently and I'm like not able to make the sound. I've tried many times. Europa Park. Europa Park. So we're going to be saying it the English way, but that's not how you would say it in German. Okay? <laughs> so don't come at us, friends. <laughs> Yeah, while we were there, we just kept thinking about how Europa Park might compare to Disney World because Kevin lived in Orlando, Florida from the age of 12 on through the time he went to college. So Yeah, yeah I have a ton of experience with Disney World and the Magic Kingdom and Epcot and all of that. And it was kind of funny, we moved to Orlando and all of a sudden, all of our friends and relatives suddenly want to come and visit us, <laughs> where they never, <laughs> he never did before. Um, so it wasn't really you that they loved. Not, well, I guess, you know, only partially. <laughs> of course, my family and I went to Disney World. We went our, by ourselves, but then every time we had a guest come, I was often the one that would go and show them around the park. So I've been to, mm -hmm. been there many times. I actually played in a Disney band uh, when I I was in marching band in high school. I got Very selected. Cool. Got selected to play in a Disney band. Uh, and, and what instrument did you play? I played sousaphone, the oh. tuba. I mean, and it's an absolutely massive band. I mean, there were 35 sousaphones in this marching band. It oh was enormous. I mean, even when I played in college, there were only 20 sousaphones in the college band. I mean, it was huge, the band. It's super fun. They didn't pay us, but they gave us free tickets. So I got 10, yeah, okay. 10 free tickets to the Disney attractions in that year. So yeah. I don't know, probably in the span of six years, I'd been to the one of the parks at Disney World, you know, total of 20 or 25 or more times. So I know the parks very well from, from being there. Lots of my friends had summer jobs there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I understand what it's like there and how things work at Disney World quite well. And that's kind of neat for me to compare my experience of being around Disney World with Europa Park. So I'm specifically going to do a comparison today with the Magic Kingdom, because Disney World in Orlando is all of the mm -hmm. Disney resorts, which includes the Magic Kingdom, the original theme park there, as well as Epcot Center, Disney Hollywood Studios, the Animal Kingdom, and then mm -hmm. I think there's two now water parks, and then the Disney Village and all these things. So it's a mm -hmm. huge destination yeah. for everything, and there's so many different parks. And so I'm taking head to head the classic iconic Magic mm -hmm. Kingdom, which by the way is the most visited theme park in the whole entire world. And I'm gonna do a head to head comparison with the most popular theme park in the world with Europa Park that we just went to that's not far away from here. So Europa Park is the most popular amusement park in all of Germany and the second most popular in all of Europe next to Disneyland Paris. Yeah. They're number one in all of Europe. 
So the first thing we wanna talk about is Walt Disney's vision for what the Magic Kingdom, well, all of the Disney resorts were going to be. He wanted to create a fantasy world where when you step in there, you don't think you're on Earth anymore. He wanted this total fantasy to completely, the experience to completely envelop you and you'd be in a totally another world. That's what he was shooting for. And mm -hmm. I mean, and, and, That's and, really cool. and in many ways he has accomplished that. And yeah. you know, part of that, I, I remember very clearly, you know, go into Disney World and the first thing you see are the hedges and they have all of the hedges mm -hmm. clipped to shape like all of the Disney characters. And so you go into the park, it's pristine, it's clean. You're supposed to have just this amazing experience. They don't call them visitors, they call them guests. Mm -hmm. The people that work there are crew members, they're not employees. I heard like an urban legend, no one knows if it's really true or not, that they did this study of how far people walk before they'll throw their trash on the ground. And, and it turned out it's like 10 meters. And so they designed their trash cans to be every 10 meters apart in the park so that it would be completely clean and pristine. And so, you know, mm -hmm. that is part of the allure of Disney World, it is. It's, it's a beautiful, amazing mm -hmm. place. Now, everything is manicured, everything is controlled. And so, one example of that is the crew members, all of the rules for how they have to have their appearance. So, hairstyles were, were mandated, the, the size of jewelry for men and women, uh, types of uh, facial hair that men could have, you know, couldn't have any tattoos showing. So, it was mm -hmm. all about having this perfect experience. Hmm. And so uh, you definitely feel that coming into Disney World. And uh, in Europa Park, it mm -hmm. is more natural, I would say. Right, you know? not dirty. No, not dirty, but... It's hard to describe in a word, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not as manicured. Yeah, it, It's not like every, every blade of grass in Disney World is engineered. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and in Europa Park, it's the trees are there. The more, and, and the trees are natural. And, they're they're yeah. natural. And like in Disney World, you know, basically it's like everything in Florida. They just cut everything down and then they plant the trees where they want them to be so that they're perfectly lying down the street, you know? Yeah. And so it's much more planned and, you mm -hmm. know, it's to have that experience of walking into another world. They're just fanatical about making sure that like the control room or machine room or any electricity or anything is hidden, that you can't see any of that thing, those things around in the park. You know, they're trying to make this otherworldly experience. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's the first thing because you definitely see that when you go to Disney World. It's everything is planned and, and manicured and, and perfect. And you don't see that. And in a way, it kind of makes you feel more at home and welcome at Europa Park. I felt, I don't know, what did it you? It felt very cozy and yeah. I felt less overwhelmed in Europa Park than I have felt in Disney World. Like just everything feels easier to get around. I don't know, I just I had a cozier feeling. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to describe. And so part of the fantasy is actually hearkening back to European architecture mm -hmm. and sort of that old world feel. So you look at uh, Fantasyland, for example, and the buildings look like Komar, even down to the overhanging second floor <laughs> over the ground. Yeah. And so a lot of the architecture was inspired by Europe. Of course, it's more fantastical, more brighter colors and sort of more plasticky and metal-y than what you might see in an authentic ones, but it's inspired by that. I mean, the Cinderella's castle is famously inspired by Neuschwanstein Castle. Mm -hmm. Even the original Disney World had the Skyway that goes between Tomorrowland and Fantasyland, and that mm -hmm. was a Swiss chairlift. And that was actually the first Van Roll brand chairlift in America, and it was Swiss made, and Walt Disney specifically brought the Swiss chairlift into the park. And so there's a lot of elements hearkening back to Europe in the architecture and and the planning and the feel for Disney World. So then the second thing is a little bit on the timing of the parks. So Disneyland in California existed in 1955, predated all of these parks. And Walt Disney wanted to sort of build on that and build the ultimate one in Orlando. And the Magic Kingdom in Orlando opened up in 1971, and the Europa okay. Park opened up four years later in 1975. 
Okay. So it was quite clear, if you go back and look at Europa Park, they were trying to play catch up. Uh, they were trying to you know, capitalize on all of the success that the Magic Kingdom has. Uh, and if you look at the original rides that Europa Park had, they had the Mississippi steamer, they had a Western train, mm -hmm. they had a jungle cruise. That one might not have been original, but it came very soon after. And they had a race car where you could drive in race cars and eventually had the Pirates of the Caribbean in Magic Kingdom and then pirates in Batavia in, in yeah. Europa Park. You know, so there's obviously a lot of copying in a way, yeah. uh, you know, Europa Park you trying, to, yeah. trying to be that. I mean, right down to what their mascot is. Yeah, <laughs> I do think it's a little cheesy that Europa Park copied the mascot. I to mean, be a mouse. Like, why is it not like something that's so adorable and cute in German, like a hedgehog? <laughs> yeah. Germans love hedgehogs. Yeah, that'd be I don't cool. know, I just thought, why can't it be like a hedgehog or a yeah. little rabbit or something different <laughs> than a mouse? I don't know, I thought, they could do a little better on that. Yeah. Yeah. And then even Europa Park started trying some other types of things like having dolphins and having seals to trying to capitalize on SeaWorld's popularity. It opened about the same time that Europa Park did. And so they're testing the waters with all of these different, uh, different things. <laughs> Seeing what and, Europeans yeah. will like. Right. Okay. And then eventually in 1982, settled on the th idea of themes for the country. So in 1982 mm -hmm. was the first country theme in Europa Park, and that was Italy. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting because 1982 was also the year that Epcot Center opened, and Epcot Center has all of the different countries as well. So I'm really mm -hmm. curious to know if they both develop them independently? I have a hard time believing that's true, but it seems like there must have been some sort of understanding mm -hmm. of what the other was doing there to start that country theme around at the same time. Now, Epcot Center opened with the big geodesic dome, mm -hmm. which Europa Park copied that too, which is, a, you know, a little bit, it's like, come on, come up with something a little different. All right, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's, of all things to copy, I don't think that's special. A big giant golf ball, it's <laughs> right. weird. It's weird in both parts. <laughs> so it does seem like in the beginning Europa Park was more you know, trying to focus on, on copying and eventually it sort of morphed into its own and started to have its own yeah. theme and own flavor that differentiated it more from Disney World. Yeah, and I would say now you don't walk in and go, oh man, Disney World. It, right. it feels different than Disney World now. Yeah, for sure. When you were talking about it looking like a fantasy world and looking like the country you're in, you definitely feel that yeah. in each of the different countries. Yes, they do an amazing job. Because I mean, we've this, traveled to many of those yeah, countries. The Swiss and, chalets <laughs> look just like Swiss chalets. You really chalets. felt like you were walking in through, up yeah. through a, a, a little Swiss village. Yeah, and the, and the Scandinavian fishing village is, you know, looks very authentic and it's really uh -huh. cool. The Spanish section, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like Sevilla. I really liked the Italy section. We stayed in the Hotel Calesio, which is an Italian, the Italy hotel. Uh -huh. And I mean, it's kind of cheesy. Everything is super themed, but I loved it. I yeah. thought it was so fun. Mm -hmm. that everything looks like you're in a grand, you know, Italian opera house or <laughs> yeah. hotel. It's yeah. really nice. So Europa Park does a good <laughs> job of making everything feel grand and amazing in the similar yeah. way as the Magic, Magic Kingdom does. Yeah. So then the third part is the size of the parks. And I'm not sure exactly, I haven't looked at the amount of uh, square meters that they take up, but if you look at the number of attractions, total number of numbered items on their map. And in the Magic Kingdom, there's 76 numbered items, which is almost the same as Disneyland Paris with 70. So they're mostly the same park in, in the Magic Kingdom in Orlando and Disneyland Paris. Okay. And, and then if you look at Europa Park, there's 132 numbered pieces. So it's almost double. It's actually much bigger in terms of the number of different things there is to do in Europa Park mm -hmm. than in the Magic Kingdom. And that kind of surprised me that it was that much bigger. So mm -hmm. that's quite interesting to me. Then if you look at the number of visitors, the Magic Kingdom just blows everybody out of the water. It has over 20 million annual visitors, which is, as we mentioned, the most in the entire world. Europa Park, not quite 6 million. Yeah. Okay, so it's, you you know, like three times more go to the Magic Kingdom. They, so they have almost double the amount of attractions, but- Three times fewer people. Yeah, 
Europa Park is going to feel way less crowded. Yeah, I mean, and it did. Yeah, it did. It much does. less, much less crowded. When we went on the Halloween week, which is considered one of the most popular yeah. weeks in, in Europa the whole Park year. for the whole park for the whole year, you know, we were there in high season for sure, and it definitely did not feel the same yeah. jam packedness like it does. Like it was in busy, World. and there were a lot of people, yeah. but it wasn't like and annoying. You, and the most famous rides, you had to wait a while. You know, there mm -hmm. were an hour or more to wait for the biggest yeah. rides, but. The roller coasters. Yeah. That's really interesting that Europa Parks has so many fewer visitors, but it's much bigger in terms of number yeah. of attractions. So then the fourth thing is parking, okay? So that is really interesting when you go to the Magic Kingdom. The Actually, the surface area of the parking lot at the Magic Kingdom is bigger than the actual area of the park itself. It's just enormous. I mean, those two things don't really make sense. If you have more places for people to park where each car can hold more people, maybe yeah. they're going to be super crowded. It's going to be magic. Very, yeah. You know, it doesn't make very, sense. Yeah, so it's it. like they should limit the number <laughs> to make the experience better. Yeah, well, they, I don't know. They, I guess they're happy to have more, more <laughs> visitors, I guess. I don't know. So if you go to the Magic Kingdom, one of the first things you'll notice is there's very often a long line to wait mm -hmm. to get into the parking lot. It just takes forever. And then depending on where you end up getting parked, I mean, that parking lot is mm -hmm. enormous and you have to ride a tram from wherever you park your car to that. get to the front mm -hmm. of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And in Europa Park, the parking lot's right across the street from the park. And it's not that big. And you walk across and you walk right into the park, okay? It's much more convenient, much easier to, to get the parking. So once you take the tram to the front of the parking lot, you're not done at the Magic Kingdom. Then you have to either take a ferry boat or the monorail to go across this big lagoon yeah. to get to the park yeah. itself. Yeah. And so there's a whole process of just, 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 just to, to get, get in. into the park. I mean, yeah. it's taken an hour or more, depending, just yeah. to, to get things settled. So you have to leave really early to be able to get, get yeah. there and get in. Now, And you're taking young kids. And right. like with our kids, they don't like to wake up early when no, we're on vacation. Our they kids like to definitely. sleep in because yeah. they've been waking up early to go to school. They wouldn't like that. They would complain and be like, we have to wake up at 6.30 just to get to the park right. for fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that would take away from the vacation for yeah. us. It definitely <laughs> takes time. And the stress. Now you're already standing in lines and fighting crowds and you haven't even gotten inside. Yeah. So then if you look at the price, in Europa Park, it's eight euros for the day for parking. And for the Magic Kingdom, it's $25, Ooh. just over three mm -hmm. times the price. Now, you can actually, in Disney World, pay $50 instead for a more priority oh, parking so you can be closer front. to the front and not have like to ride, ride the tram. Now, huh? I mean, so 50 bucks? I mean, just to park your car a little bit closer so you don't have to, I mean, that's, that's a big it's difference. A big difference in price there, you know, for the parking. And then there's the price to get into the park itself. And if you look at the prices, it's about, again, like the parking was three times as much, the prices, the entry prices are about three times as much. It depends a little bit on when high season is considered and the prices change a little bit, but it's roughly about three times the price, at least for our family. Both places have young kids get in free, although it's up through four-year-olds get in free at Europa Park, but it's only up through three-year-olds at Disney World. Really? I yeah. didn't know either one. You they yeah. had that. Well, yeah, they're free. Well, that's good. Um, but then <clears throat> Magic Kingdom, once you get, I can't remember what age, but it's a year earlier where you also have to pay for an adult ticket. Age range for child tickets is at least two years smaller at the Magic Kingdom than it is for Europa Park. So they're, they're a little bit pricier there, and that leads, uh, of course, into being more expensive. So at least for our family, about three times the price for entry, just like parking is three times the price. So that's a significant We difference. saved a ton of money by going <laughs> yeah. to Europa Park. Yeah. Yeah, so for the Magic Kingdom, for our family, it would be about $1,700 for two days for two us. Two days. Okay. Uh, whereas, that's an expensive uh, two days. Yeah, for Europa Park, it's 570 which is still pricey. Ooh, it's still, it's pricey. still a lot of money, but it's not three times as much. Yeah. And like where we used to live in Georgia, a lot of our friends would go down to Orlando. Yeah. Well, not a lot of them. I, I knew I know several friends, and if you're watching this video, you know <laughs> who you are, who love Disney and they yeah. go very often. But for us, we knew like 
if we're gonna make a trip down there, it's gonna cost us like 5,000 bucks per trip, at least for six people, and we just never really could afford it. Mm. So the main thing that kept us from going was money. Yeah. Then number six is food. I haven't eaten at the Magic Kingdom for a long time, so I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. I don't have any firsthand experience, but I was digging around and there's a bunch of different blogs about people you know, giving advice mm -hmm. and things going to Disney World. And they recommended somewhere between $200 and $250 for four, a family of four for a day of eating. Mm -hmm. And for us, the one day that we spent the whole day in the park and ate was when we went to the water park at Rulantica. And mm -hmm. for the whole day, for all six of us, we paid 120 euros for all of us. Yeah. And so if you- I felt that was very affordable. It was very affordable. And the food was very good. Uh, we basically had two and a half meals because yeah, they, they had a snack. We did. Included, even gotten, you know, one of those a refillable cups. Cup. One of those refillable cups. That it was 18, 18 euros. Yeah, right. <laughs> now that was a rip off. <laughs> Um, so again, the pricing there is around three times the amount for food. So parking, entry, food was all about three times more expensive at the Magic Kingdom than it is in Europa Park. And Europa Park is the only park in the entire world with Michelin star restaurants. <laughs> the food was excellent. Yes, it was very, very it good. It was so good. <laughs> yeah. And what's great as a parent is that they have playgrounds in the hotel itself. So the kids <laughs> yeah. would leave the table, <laughs> go, play. go play on the playground, in an right next to the epic, restaurant. It was an epic indoor playground. Cool, It was yeah. very cool. Awesome playground. And we got to sit and enjoy. relax and enjoy our <laughs> drinks with no screaming children or finding children. And they were happy. <laughs> Both parks do allow you to bring food in. My recollection when I was younger was that it was not allowed into Disney World when I was young. And actually Disney World is one of the only theme parks in America that does allow outside food in. That's, uh -huh. that's generally- not common in the US. It's not common. So, so actually Disney World's a little bit progressive in that sense of actually allowing food food in. I don't think they used to, but they do allow it in. So that is nice, okay? But they don't give you anywhere to eat it. There are no picnic areas anywhere in Disney World. You just sit your butt down on the concrete. Yeah, exactly. Nice. And so again, like I was saying, there's all these people giving tips and blogs and stuff about how to increase your Disney experience. I found one about five places to do a picnic in the Magic Kingdom. They're not all picnic areas. They're all like, oh, well go to this spot. They originally intended for something to be built there, but it's not there, so there's actually a little spot Spot there that you can sit and eat there. Or there's, on Tom Sawyer's Island, there's a restaurant that when that isn't a restaurant anymore and there happen to be a few tables that are there because the restaurant doesn't exist anymore. So you have to know these you know, few little places. And there's one, oh here, there's actually an umbrella and you can get into the shade, you know? <laughs> Which is very important in Florida. Very important in Florida. <laughs> I mean, it, you we know, shade. and there's just not that much shade at, at the Magic Kingdom. You know, I was talking about how they, they chop down all the trees and then just put up a few to make it pretty, you know. And There's they need shade. They do. It's very, it very hot melt. there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, you know, at the Magic Kingdom, there's no explicit places to picnic. Whereas in Europa Park, they have, if you look on the map, there's a little icon for picnic areas. And on Europa Park's webpage, one of their frequently asked questions is about picnic areas. And they say, hey, come bring your food. Come, here's picnic areas. Yeah. They're here and here and here and here. So- You know you're welcome you're, you're to do well, it. Exactly, you know, so you don't feel mm -hmm. like the Magic Kingdom that you're supposed to break out your, your picnic lunch. That's not what people do and not the expectation. Yeah, and I saw tons of families, especially when you have toddlers and babies yep. where you have very specific diets you want them to eat and you don't yep. want them eating junk and stuff. Um, tons of families with little snacks and giving their kids food all throughout the day. Yeah. And that's how you keep little children happy is to constantly <laughs> feed yeah. them. And God forbid that you'd have to buy a $5 you know, thing of french fries every single yeah. time just to keep their bellies full. Yeah. If you look at like an aerial view of the Magic Kingdom and an aerial view of Europa Park, you can see they're totally different. In the Magic Kingdom, there's all of the roads are giant. They're super wide and there's like this giant circle in the in the middle and just tons of concrete and it's just wide open spaces of concrete everywhere. And you know, 
and with I, the sun coming with, beating down with the Florida sun, ninety five degrees, yeah, forty, you know, forty which is plus, like 40 plus Celsius. Yeah, I mean, it is massive humidity on black hot. concrete. Yeah, I mean, so you know, there's just <laughs> no not, thank you. There's not a lot of shade mm -hmm. in the Magic Kingdom. Now, part of it is because the crowds are so big. I mean, you need all that space to ferry all the peace people from one place <laughs> to another because it's so packed with people. So you they know, can go stand in line. So they can go stand in line in the, in, in the hot sun. <laughs> There's just trees everywhere throughout in Europa Park and you feel nice and shaded and yes. it's great. There were lots of trees. Yeah, I mean, so that's a huge difference between Germany and where Europa Park is and Florida <laughs> is obviously the climate is vastly different. Yes. And I'm not exactly sure why Disney thought the beating hot sun of Florida would be the perfect place to put his park? Well, probably because in the winter, it's very rarely below 10 degrees Celsius in the winter. So it can stay stay jam-packed all year round, you know, without any trouble of being cold. That's my guess. Yeah, maybe. Whereas like in Europa Park in the winter, they have bonfires <laughs> all around. You can warm yourself by. Yeah. People are just hardcore, man. They just put on <laughs> their winter pants and their, you know, yeah. their, I can't say it in, in, in English anymore. Their schneejackas. Your schneejackas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they put on their warm winter clothes and tough it out. Um, but I, I wonder, maybe the attendance does go down a good bit in the winter. I in, in Europa it probably, Park. Does. It probably Except does. for that week after Christmas. But yeah. Yeah, sure. From May to September, it can be brutally, like, brutally hot, oh, yeah. especially in July and yeah. August. I wouldn't even attempt to go to Disney World in those two months. Mm -mm. It's just so freaking hot. Yeah, totally. And you, you just can boil. get some hot days, of course, in Germany, but it is not, it's not, the same. It's not even close to being no. the same, guys, as no. what it is in Florida. No, you can't compare. So if you're wanting to have a more pleasurable weather experience, I would choose Europa Park. However, you are going to deal with more rainy days and yes. more cold. Yes. So. Yeah, depends. Maybe it balances out, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe so. It's kind of perplexing to me that the Magic Kingdom, which is obviously geared towards younger oh, children, yes. mm -hmm. there's pretty much zero playgrounds in the park. And I mean like a place where you go and there's a seesaw and slides and swings and stuff. There really are none of those in the Magic Kingdom. Again, you know, there's some people giving some tips and tricks and they say, well, there's here, try out these six play areas. And really only two of them are actually playgrounds. One's an indoor soft play area and the other is a sort of play area. But even in this blog, they say, well, don't expect your kids to stay long because it's pretty small, you know? Mm. And the others are more just like experiences like Tom Sawyer's Island, where you, which is really cool and you can get lost and have fun in there, but it's not a playground, it's, it's a place to explore and it's an attraction, but it's not a playground. Mm. Whereas at Europa Park, there again, there's a little icon on the map for where you're gonna find these play areas. Yeah. And, and for example, in Ireland, mm. that whole country basically is all for little kids and their playgrounds. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. we're talking epic playgrounds. Uh-huh. Yeah, amazing. There's this gigantic, it's supposed to be a dragon. You slide down the dragon's yeah. neck. And I mean, it was like a ride. I mean, uh -huh. I went down that thing a couple <laughs> times because it was so cool. I had to go climb back up the, the stairs to go down it again. It was really fun. <laughs> so it's like- It's there's... a ride, it's for little kids and here's the dad doing it. <laughs> but I mean, there's playgrounds everywhere. So, you know, you can do your picnic lunch. You can go and play yes. in the playground. Kids run around and do whatever on the playground. It is really- Really, really small kid friendly. Yeah, and parent friendly. Yeah. Because standing in lines with toddlers is just about the worst thing you could possibly do. Right. You might as well just stab your eyeball with a fork. Who toddlers can't stand still in a line. This is awful. So even on the toddler rides, there can be some lines. So in Europa Park, if your kids are just done and they've had it, or if you've had it as a parent and your nerves are shot, you can go sit in one of the picnic areas, take a load off, let your kids run and be free and be wild. And if you're like our family where you have kids of different ages, yes. like what we did, our big kids could go off by themselves mm -hmm. and do the big kid rides. And then with Ella and Griffin, we could do things for the smaller kids. And Ella did play on a lot of the different playgrounds oh, yeah. because she just got sick and tired of standing in line. And even as a six-year-old thought, this is boring, mommy. I don't want to stand in any more lines. Right. So, okay, great. We don't have to. Let's go play on the playground. Let's go, go down the dragon next slide. And she loved that. Her and Grayson <laughs> played in that um, castle in Ireland at nighttime for quite a long time. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. 
So then the ninth thing leads off of what Sarah's talking about of things being for big kids, the roller coasters. So you look at the Magic Kingdom mm -hmm. and there's exactly four roller coasters in all of the Magic Kingdom, okay? And they're all for littler kids. The biggest roller coaster in the Magic Kingdom is Space Mountain and you have to be 112 centimeters to ride that one. Now actually Ella's like exactly 112 centimeters. So she would have been tall enough to ride every ride that there was in the Magic Kingdom. Then there's Thunder Mountain, you have to which be 100. Which is great when you're young. Which is great when you're young. Well, but there's only four of them to pick from. Yeah. yeah. Then Thunder Mountain's 102 centimeters, and then there's Dwarf Mine, and mm. one other one, and I think they're 87 centimeters you have to be, so they're pretty small roller coasters. They're not gonna be all that fantastically awesome. Of course, they're great if you're a little kid, you get to ride a roller coaster, okay? But there's just these four roller coasters. Although I will say the Magic Kingdom is planning, I think next year, to open a new roller coaster based on Tron. And from what I can tell, it is more for bigger kids. So they're looking to improve that. But right now, there's only four roller coasters mm -hmm. there. At least four roller coasters in Europa Park that Ella could ride. I think there's five or six. I'm not sure. Um, there's a whole bunch that are 100 centimeters. And then there's a whole bunch more that are 120 centimeters, which Ella couldn't ride. Um, so mm -hmm. there's at least as many roller coasters in Europa Park that she could ride as the Magic Kingdom. And then there's all these amazing yeah, other ones. Yeah. The Blue Fire Coaster, you have to be 130 centimeters to ride. And Silver Star, you need to be 140 centimeters to ride. There's all these coasters for big kids. And like Sarah said, the big kids were able to go off by themselves and find lots of fun things to do. Yeah. And you know, you might think at first, that's kind of weird that Europa Park is almost twice as big in terms of the number of attractions that they have, but you know, how can you do them all? But we couldn't do them all, but the bigger kids could do half and the littler kids could do half yeah. and we could all be in the same, same park, park together. and we would yeah. meet up every so often and yeah. ride some of the same rides together so we could yeah. all be in the same park yeah. together and enjoy different things but still have the experience together instead yes. of sending the kids to Epcot and, and us go to Magic Kingdom. I mean, you can't do that. You're completely physically separated. There's no, yeah. I would not feel comfortable doing that in Disney World of sending them to a different park is where we were. So yeah. that was a really big benefit of having all these coasters and fun things and Europa yeah. Park having so many more attractions than the Magic Kingdom does. Our oldest two, Gabriel and Grayson, really enjoyed going off oh, yeah. by themselves and riding the coasters by yeah. themselves. They loved it. You know, we could keep in touch with them on our phones, and we knew they were just a little bit away. We could always meet up if yep. they needed money, which usually was the reason, <laughs> money for food. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, and for us as parents, we mostly stayed with the younger ones, and we still had just as much fun because the rides are like they are in Disney. They're very themed, and yeah. there's tons of details and so many things to tons see. of things to look at, <laughs> yeah. like the Paratin in Batavia ride the Pirates of the Netherlands and the actual places they went to in the world is based on actual yeah. history. In the Pacific, yeah. In the Pacific, yeah. I mean, the ride is just gorgeous. You, I, I had to ride it twice. I wanted to yeah. ride it a third time because you just have so much to look at. It's like you can't get enough of it. It's so cool. Yeah. So for the parents, it's fun as well as for the kids, which Disney is that way also. Disney is, and that and was part of- they do a great of, job with that as well. And that was part of Walt Disney's plan was for it to be an amazing experience for both kids and the adults. Yeah, so both parks do that well, yeah, I would say. for sure. Then the 10th thing is the water rides. In the Magic Kingdom, there's just one flume ride, one, one water ride, which at first you think, well, it's Florida is hot, wouldn't it be great to have lots of water rides? But they do have two water, water parks, parks. Yeah. two water parks. Uh, I mean, Europa Park has their water park too. Oh. There's just that one water ride in the Magic Kingdom where there's mm -hmm. just tons of water rides, lots of flumes <laughs> and this rafting ride, a whole bunch of them at Europa in Park. Cold in the cold Germany, which is really funny. But to fix that, they have uh -huh. these little wa warming cabins. So yep. you pay, put a little two euro coin in and it has this, uh -huh. I guess it's infrared or I'm not sure if it's just heat lamps or what. But it's basically a giant blow dryer. Yeah, right. And it so good. it was really nice to keep you nice and warm. So, uh, so they'll have the water ride but then they'll have a way to help you get warmed up afterwards. But Europeans know how to deal with cold weather. Oh, They're is... used to it. I mean, there was tons of families that had on full rain gear. They had on yeah. the Regenhose and the Regenjacke. <laughs> yes. And the little kids looked like they were going to go play in the mud. I mean, <laughs> and they did all the water rides with yeah. their full rain gear on. Yeah. So they know how to deal with it in cold weather. It's funny. Then the 11th thing is looking at the fast pass that they have at Magic Kingdom versus the virtual line that is in Europa Park. And this is sort of 
both parks ways of getting past the long lines. Mm -hmm. So of course in the Magic Kingdom, they didn't have that originally. I do remember when Fast Pass first came out, I'm not sure if maybe it was around 1990 or something like that, somewhere in that time frame. And it was really cool. And I was really, it was really neat because if you used it right, you could sign up for a certain time for two rides and you could make sure that you get those two most popular rides at those times. And then you mm -hmm. could focus on the less popular ones. So it was really great at the, at the Magic Kingdom to have that Fast Pass. Although in recent years now, they've changed it to not being free anymore to being a paid service. Oh, and so now oh. you have to pay and it's somewhere between $7 per person. It can be as much as $20 per person oh on the popular rides no, to get you. a fast pass no. on there. So, no. so they've changed that from being a nice free service that was really useful to something that only if you've got tons of money. How much money can yeah, we make? Exactly. Let's and so, make as much as we can. So if you're not paying that money, you're getting, you're waiting even longer in the lines being skipped by by the people that are having pay to play ones, you know, so. You know, that, that's a bit of a shame the way they changed that. Now, to be fair, the virtual line at Europa Park, which is basically the same thing, you can only sign up for one thing at a time and, and they give you a time and you have to go at mm -hmm. that time. At least on the first day that we were there, it was more crowded that day and mm -hmm. it all the virtual line slots were booked. And at least with a fast pass, you got two and you could sign up for two and you always got two. Whereas here in virtual line, uh, they were all booked up well, on that yeah, first day. Yeah, we couldn't day. do any the first day, but the second day we could. Gabriel definitely made use of that he was on his phone all the time refreshing trying to find when he would get his virtual line so we did use that and it was nice but when it's most crowded those slots fill up so fast that it what isn't really useful at Europa Park on the really heavy days however for those who don't have the virtual line they're not having to wait as long because I've been in that experience like at Six Flags and it's awful where you're already standing in line for like an hour to get on a roller coaster and the people who have the fast passes just keep getting in ahead of in front of you and there's yeah. tons of them they just keep coming and coming and and so you wait longer and longer and it just feels more and more fair like I also paid to get into this park this is right. you're sort of ruining my experience and so what I noticed at Europa Park is that there were fewer in the fast pass line there were just like maybe five and so it just feels a little more fair to everyone yeah. else who also paid. You can get in fast with your fast pass and that's cool. So you can get that experience a few times a day, but you also have to stand in line. I don't know. It just felt more fair. For Americans, I would say that Europa Park is like Six Flags and Disney yeah. had a baby yeah. because <laughs> it's full of roller coasters and full of the Magic Kingdom fantasy magic. Yeah you know, that you see. In yeah, the, the Grimm's fairy tale area was just so cool. Oh, that was my favorite. Yeah, I loved it. Fun. Yeah. I loved very, it. Very, very much fantasy oriented. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. All the fairy tales come to life, but not in a Disney way, in a right. more authentic way. Right. And then the last and 12th point is the hotels, the in-park, you know, quote unquote, in-park hotels, okay? Now both parks, Magic Kingdom have them, and Europa Park has them. I've never experienced the in-park hotels in the Magic mm. Kingdom, so can't speak to them, but I'm sure they're really amazing. Yeah, they're probably um, very nice. And the ones that we saw at Europa Park were also really amazing. I it. <laughs> it was super cool. Oh, can highly recommend them. Yeah, it was really neat. And the hotels are truly four-star hotels. Beautiful, Beautiful grand. Yes. yes. Um, you feel like you're being taken very good care of. And, and all of the staff, very friendly. I found all the staff within yes. Europa Park to be very friendly mm -hmm. and warm. And well, we had one grumpy person. <laughs> yeah, there are a couple of grumpy. And I'm sure at Disney, they're very friendly. And yes, that's part of the experience. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to be friendly if you're working Six Flags, at no. No. <laughs> they are grumpy, <laughs> no. But yeah, Disney is different. And I think some of the best pizza we have ever had was in that restaurant in yes. the hotel. It was amazing pizza. Like the kids noticed the difference too. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was really, delicious. Really good, really good. So the hotels were absolutely amazing. Yeah. And the in-park hotels at Europa Park, uh, we stayed in the Coliseo, which was literally across the street from the park. You have to go under this little tunnel and you're at the park. Yeah. And there were other hotels five there. Minute, less than five it was minutes. Le it was two minute walk. Yeah, okay? two minutes. You know, there were other hotels on the other side of the street, the Alcazar, yeah. and one side of the hotel opened into the park. There was an exit from the hotel into the park. 
I mean, you can't get any yeah. closer than that. And it was really cool because we got to get into the park a half hour or an hour early. I'm not sure. A half hour. A half hour. So you get to get into the park a half hour early. I'm not sure they may do that at Disney at the Magic Kingdom might, too. Yeah. I'm not sure about that. But it was really useful to be able to get in the park early and get at some of those rides And into quickly. the back of the park. Right. So the, the hotel guests get in early and go to the back of the park while the – public is getting in at the front. So yeah. if you stay in the back of the park. You can do lots of things yeah. for an hour, hour and a half, hour almost more. two hours before anybody really gets in. Yeah, so that but was really your good. strategy should be to go to the front of the park <laughs> at 830 and do all the popular stuff and make your way back. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, in the Magic Kingdom, there are hotels in the park and they are sort of in between where the parking lot is and where the actual park is but they're not next door you still have to ride the monorail to get there so you have to still get on the monorail and ride it from the hotel to the park you you, you don't just walk out your back door in the park so it definitely is more convenient than waiting in that line and tr you know taking mm -hmm. the tram across the parking lot but still it's, it's not as close and as convenient like it is in Europa Park where you walk out your back door and you're there in the park already. And that's with the exception of Rulantica the water park True. you do have to take a bus to well, get unless you to. stay in the hotel that's in Rolantica. Yeah, you can stay in the Rolantica <laughs> hotel, but then you're taking a bus, bus every day here. or the monorail to right. get into the park. Yeah. So that's why we chose not to stay in Rulantica because we wanted to spend more time in Europa Park yeah. than Rulantica. And we absolutely made use of the hotel room. We would go back and forth between, yeah. you know, the kids would get tired and one of them would go and lay down and rest in, yeah. in the hotel room. And you, I mean, it was... I, you know, we were in the so middle of the park easy. and it was 10 minutes for me to walk and bring yeah. one of the kids back and, so nice. and then get right back. I mean, it was mm -hmm. really, really convenient. Uh, so nice to have that flexibility, just come in and out whenever you want. It doesn't feel like this ordeal. Oh, we got to go get on the monorail and go back. And it was very nice, very convenient. Yeah, our two youngest needed that break time. And especially if you have toddlers and babies, you're going to want to go back and take the naps. And, yeah. and you can because you can have a ticket to get back in and... Yeah, it's so convenient. We highly recommend staying in one of the yeah, room park hotels. And they also had live music in the restaurants every night. There was a, a Mexican mariachi band. <laughs> Fantastic mariachi they band. Were amazing. I loved them. <laughs> and they were at the Spanish restaurant, at the Italian restaurant. Don't ask me why Mexico is thrown in with Europe. Don't I don't <laughs> understand. Uh, but it's great music, so I guess who cares? And that's the other thing is there's a New England part of Europa Park, which really kind of throws us yeah, off because it's the, the Bell Rock Hotel. The Bell Rock Hotel, and it's, it's supposed to represent the first 13 colonies of the U.S. <laughs> it kind of is not like politically correct anymore, but um, and it's weird to throw America in there with all of the rest of Europe. I found that to be strange. So, yeah. if you guys know more about that, let us know in the comments below. <laughs> so overall, I felt like the magical experience at Europa Park was equivalent to the magical experience that I would have at the Magic Kingdom. It was truly amazing, so beautiful, so much fun, great for the whole family, even more so than the Magic Kingdom is. So it, it rivaled in terms of the magic, and then less crowds, better oriented towards families, more mm -hmm. things to do for big kids and little kids. Mm -hmm. I, honestly, I had a much better experience at Europa Park than, than just the Magic Kingdom alone. Of course, you can get more of the total experience with the whole at Disney World, but then it just easier and felt more family friendly, oddly, at Europa Park. Yeah, and I don't have the direct experience Kevin does with Disney World, so I just was experiencing Europa Park as, you know, by itself. And, I mean, for me as an adult, I felt like a kid for three <laughs> days, and I had so much fun, and I loved it, and I wanted to do more rides, and, you know, the kids were happy and having fun. The food was delicious. The drinks were delicious. The hotel was such a great experience. So it was a vacation for us, too. We had fun. Mm -hmm. And that's another point I forgot to mention about the food is the alcohol that you can buy beer, uh, you know, basically anywhere in the Europa Park Park. Mm -hmm. You know, people are sitting down Parents. enjoying lunch, having their beer. Uh -huh. And uh, there is alcohol in the Magic Kingdom, but it's only at like the four, three or four most fanciest sit down restaurants. So you have to make a reservation yeah. and go to one of these fancy restaurants and sit down and have your meal. And then you can, you can mm -hmm. buy alcohol there. So um, that is a nice thing. You can enjoy your beer in the sun in Europa Park and, and uh, chill out a little more while the kids are on the playground. <laughs> and I just want to make one point that 
You know, what we're comparing today is obviously nothing important. Like it's just fun <laughs> and it's like first world problems. And if you absolutely love Disney World and you live near Disney World and you go there often, keep on doing that. Keep enjoying yourself. This is all about us having fun and enjoying our lives. So it's not that there's, it's not that you shouldn't like Disney World or that Europa Park you know, is, well, it is better, but <laughs> I mean. <laughs> At least for our, for, for what us, we're looking for. For us personally, we do <laughs> like Europa Park better, but of course there's nothing wrong with loving Disney World yeah, and, and loving There's a lot the of experience. magic involved with that too. Yeah, and you've got your Disney princesses in the Disney, in Disney World, which for Europeans, maybe it's hard to understand, but you know, especially me, I grew up with The Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast and Cinderella and all these movies. And so when, then you get to go to the Magic Kingdom and see these, uh, princesses that you've like loved in these movies and get to meet them in person, the characters. Every German grows up to go see Ed and Edda at, uh, at Europa <laughs> Park, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely no one. <laughs> and that's another difference in the experience that actually Disney does a little bit better job on is having more characters walking around and mm -hmm. interacting with the kids yeah. and having more parades. Yeah. And I will say the kids love, especially young kids, love to see characters. I mean, some of them are scared to death of the characters. <laughs> but like Ella, she's not she's not afraid of characters. So she was so excited to meet Ed and Edda and the two the two mouse my I can't think of the word in English. I was gonna say moisa. <laughs> <laughs> the two moisa. <laughs> the two mice. <laughs> and, and we got pictures with them and it was just cute. And I thought it would be nice if, you know, why couldn't they have a Rapunzel walking around? Because we're in Grimm's Fairy Forest. Why couldn't there be a Rapunzel walking around mm -hmm. who has maybe auth really authentic clothing from that time on? Or a, um, I mean, they had some a little red riding hood. And people dressed up going around in Halloween and stuff. costumes. They did yeah. have people in Halloween yeah. costumes. They were sure. good costumes. <laughs> but I would have liked yeah. to see a few more characters. Yeah, more characters in the parades. That really I, brings... I was in that giant marching band, so they have huge epic parades yeah. at Disney World. And so, they did yeah. have one parade a day at 5.30 in the evening. It was a really nice parade, very well done. But I wanted to see more characters yeah. walking around. <laughs> that really does add to the fantasy too, because sure. now you're seeing them in 3D. Yeah, you're yeah, seeing sure. real people walking around. For the little kids, that really brings a lot of magic. So sure. yeah, so if you love Disney World, keep on loving it. We're not trying to make <laughs> you feel bad or anything like that, because I have close friends and family who really love Disney World. So <laughs> I'm not trying to poo-poo on your experience, I promise. <laughs> Maybe this video can inspire you that when you do come to Europe, you're definitely gonna love and enjoy a trip to Europa Park and we can highly recommend it. But our kids are already asking when we're gonna be going back to Europa Park. And Gabriel the oldest the most actually. <laughs> and we have more to see in the Black Forest. We haven't been to Freiburg. We haven't been to the Open Air Museum. I really want to see that Open Air Museum on Black, the Black Forest. And um, we could go down to Basel in Switzerland, you know, so there's other cities we can see. Definitely. Yeah, around there, so we'll be back. All right, guys, so we hope you enjoyed this video. It was pretty long, but God, who knew we could go on so long about amusement parks? Yeah, I know. Maybe we should become the amusement park we're, channel. We're not amusement park junkies, and no, yet exactly. there's a lot we to talk even, about it. We usually don't like them. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Europa Park has changed us forever we now. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, guys, so thanks so much for watching. We hope you have a great rest of your week, and we will see you in the next video. Cheers. Cheers.